Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Farrell. I'm a pharmacist, I work in Albany. I work for Albany Medical Center as a clinical pharmacist. And I'm also faculty at Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. I've been in rheumatology for 15 years, which is crazy to think. Today, I'm going to talk to you about leflutamide. So leflutamide is not a medication that we talk about that much. So I thought I would go through some clinical pearls and some things about using leflutamide to think about you know, in my practice, I don't have a ton of new starts on leflutamide, but um, we have patients that have been on it for a long time. And I just wanna talk about some of the pharmacokinetics and dynamics related to the medication, especially if you have a patient who's getting older who's on the medication. So one unique thing about leflutamide is that it goes through what we call enterohepatic recycling. And that means that it can stay in the system as it's metabolized for a very long time. So it just keeps looping around. And the active metabolite can stay for a really long time. There's actually reports of active metabolite found years after patients have stopped therapy. So the reason I bring this up is that if you have a patient on leflutamide and they are having some toxicity, so in terms of toxicity with leflutamide, it's generally well tolerated, but there can be liver enzyme elevations. I have had patients have a little bit of alopecia, but if the patient is having any of those symptoms and you need to get it out of their system, we have to use what's called a cholestyramine wash. So what that does, it's a bile resin, it binds up the active metabolite, it's dosed a few times a day, so usually three times a day for seven to 10 days, and that really binds up that, that active metabolite and flushes it out of the system. And that can be really helpful if the patient is having toxicity. The other reason that we might use a cholestyramine wash is if you have a patient who may want to get pregnant and has been on the flutamide. I try to make sure that my providers aren't starting patients on the flutamide if they have any plans to get pregnant in the future or in our younger patient population. But if a patient, if we inherit a patient, if they come to us on it, um, you can also use that cholestyramine wash to, to clear out that active metabolite because leflutamide is also teratogenic. A couple other things, if you look it up in the drug databases, you'll see that there's a loading dose that's sometimes used with leflutamide. In my practice, we don't really do that. We just start patients off on therapy. We will combine it sometimes. So if you have a patient who's got mild RA and they are on hydroxychloroquine and they maybe didn't have tolerability to methotrexate, then and you wanna try leflutamide, that's sometimes the scenario before we move on to biologics or to avoid using biologics. The other thing though I would keep in mind though is if you have a patient who's been stable on leflutamide for years and as they age, keep in mind that their organs are starting to not function as well and there's a lot of active metabolism with leflutamide, so um, just keeping that in mind. Uh, as their kidneys function starts to decrease and as their liver function starts to decrease. So you might need to lower the dose or start to think about having them come off therapy if maybe their um, uh, organ function isn't gonna be metabolizing the drug properly. All right, so that's all I got about leflutamide. And if you need more information, check out the RAP website. Also check out our RAP app. We have lots of new digital content coming and we'll see you there.